Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is a trying to fix video and in this video we're going to try to fix this musical wooden box here. So let me show you the listing and then I can show you around the box and show you what the fault is. So it says here, used vintage wooden musical jewellery box not working, veneer bird scene lid and I paid uh, £5.99 and £3.90 postage, so that is £9.89. So not a huge amount of money for it, and had plenty of pictures. Let me show you the description here. It says, you are viewing a listing for a used, small vintage wooden musical box with a hinge lid in well-used condition. The wind-up mechanism is not working. The lid has inlaid wood veneer seen off two birds in flight and there is some veneer lost to the lid corners. There are three brass type hinges with a metal push closer on the lid. There is green felt on the base. The wind-up mechanism is marked, don't know how to pronounce that, Geisas, 1848, Switzerland and has a small light bulb which is also not working. The push on cover to the mechanism is painted with wood and has a further stuck down printed paper image of fruit vegetables on top. Tune unknown. So you can see there that basically it's not playing the music and the light is not working up. So that is what I am interested in. So let me show you around the box itself. It is in good condition. You can see there's a chip up here. So I'm not gonna worry about any of that. Looking around this, what I think is that uh, I think that maybe this bottom piece here was like a professional piece, and I think that this is a DIY lid that's been put on it. But saying that, you can see there's a fair bit of skill gone into it, because I remember doing this back at school once, I tried to do a woodpecker, and it is not easy whatsoever. So uh, you can see two ducks there in flight, some birds in the background, some reeds here, and like a water scene with a couple of trees. So it's quite detailed when you consider that all those bits are just cut out of wood. The closer you get, you can see that it's not so uh, not so good, but from a distance, it looks quite nice. Yeah. One thing I'm not sure about is this little handle here. It's colder than the rest. I think it's a natural material. It looks kind of like a kind of mother of pearl, but it's like a brown colour. I'm not sure about this white underneath. I'm wondering if this is old, whether that could be some sort of bone and then a bit of mother of pearl stuck on the top of that. But I'm not too sure, but hopefully in the comments somebody will know what that is there. So uh, yeah, you can see here, I don't think this looks like a kind of finished product, like uh, that would come out of uh, somebody that was doing it for a living all the time. It just looks a bit it looks a bit DIY, doesn't it? But the actual bottom bit here does look quite nice. So this has definitely been put together at home. And you can see up here and stuff like that. So we have a little catch, and then this is where the music thing is stored. But listen, if I wind it up, can you see? It's releasing all, I'm not gonna do it anymore in case I damage it. It's releasing all its energy in one go. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's going on in there. It said in there that it's also got a light as well, but I can't see any light, so I'm presuming that maybe this lights up or something. So uh, it looks like there's little screws hidden around here. So let's bring this over to the blue mat and we'll have a look at it and let's see if we can get the music working again. It'd be quite nice to hear it because there's something very relaxing about hearing clockwork music. And not only that, the main thing is to see the mechanism and see what it's like. So I think that's well worth £10 of anybody's money, even when it's broken. Now personally, it's not the sort of thing I would go for, but you have to appreciate that that would have taken many, many hours to do. And it's a shame that, you know, there's probably a granddad somewhere that made it and it's just been, you know, got rid of for £10, which is a bit of a shame because a lot of work went into that. Well, let's get over to the blue mat and let's see the inside of it. Looking forward to looking at this one. I haven't done a mechanical item in a while, so it makes a nice change sometimes to go away from electrical items. But saying that, this has got a light bulb in it. So, uh, that might be a nice mixture of mechanical and electrical. So we've got little brass screws holding it in here. We also have a couple of screws here at the side. Ah, okay, right, here we have the little bit of magic. Well, let's zoom right in here because we've got a light bulb on here. Uh, let's see if we can work out what's going on. So you can see that this thing has serious age here, but the light bulb is definitely not modern, but you can see that this is some sort of DIY thing that's been added to it. Now, how on earth would a light bulb light up just from a clockwork toy? What's going on here? So we've got a red lead going down. That looks like it's trapped behind there. Right. 
and we've got a black lead that goes round. Where's a black lead go to? So it goes under there. Does it just come up there? What's this thing here for? Is that just to screw it? Is that just a way of mounting it onto here? What's this thing here for? Oh, is this... Oh! Is this some sort of like, maybe you were supposed to push down or something? Or maybe when the lid closes, it was supposed to knock this down? Saying that there's nothing on here, is there? This was screwed in. There's nothing on there. So, oh! Well, that's fine. That's just, uh, that's just screwed on there anyway. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. But look, that's definitely been designed to push up and down, hasn't it? How is that supposed to light up? Where's it getting its power from? Anyway, let's give it a little spin and see what's happening. Oops. Right, right so it's just unleashing all its energy at once. So is this thing here the thing that's supposed to... Let me get some tweezers. Is this the thing like uh, like the... Like a regulator? I'm going to be very gentle here now. This is quite interesting, I'll tell you why. I watched a repair shop recently, that's a programme in the UK, and they had a musical box. And basically this thing here was similar to, I think they called it a, a governor or a regulator or something, and it was similar to, you know, the wind-up toys, not the wind-up, the pull string toys that I do, and the, the governor thing that spreads out at the bottom to slow down. Well, this, I think, causes air resistance to slow it down. So it's this thing here which stops it from releasing its energy all at once, because you can see it's got big flappy paddles on it, and that must, you know, have resistance against the air to spin it round. So depending on the size of the paddles, I think this depends on the speed of the actual thing itself. So if you were to have big paddles, it's going to spin slower because there's going to be more friction. If you were to have small paddles, it's going to spin quicker. And right now, look, that's not spinning at all. Hence the reason why it's releasing its energy all in one go. OK, so look, let's have a look at that a little bit more detail in a bit. Let's just concentrate because somebody's gone to the bother of trying to wire this up to a light bulb. But I'm thinking the speed this would be spinning at, how would that generate enough to make the light bulb work? It's not exactly like a bicycle where you have a dynamo on a wheel which is spinning really quick. So I'm not quite sure how this would work. But let's just check the bulb to begin with. Also, it's a very strange looking bulb. Electricians would have a go at me for calling that a bulb. It's a lamp. Because a bulb is a flower bulb. Right, let's have a look at the, what it says here. It says, ever ready? Two, and then there's a big splodge of solder on it. So I can't see what it says. I'm just going to get my eye loop on here, see if I can see any other reading on it. No, unfortunately, I can't read it because the solder has gone right across it. So it definitely says ever ready there. And then it says two, so it's going to be two point something volts. And then it's got two amps at the end, or it could be something point two amps. Not only the solder's right in the way, but looking through here, that looks intact. So let's get the multimeter out and let's see if we have got continuity. I don't think that bulb is blown. Continuity. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so the bulb itself is definitely, lamp is definitely okay. So let's now have a look at, let's have a look at the electrical side of it first, first of all, and then we can have a look at the mechanical side. So I suppose what I need to do is I need to be able to take this off. Do I need to be able to take it off the bottom? I can see there's big screws dotted around, so let's start on them. it's going to be the bottom here that's keeping it in, isn't it? So how do I, uh, how do I undo the key? Uh, do I have to stop it from going round to undo the key? Yeah. Excellent. So now that should 
come apart and then I can see what's going on with these wires. There we go. Right, perfect. Now we can take this off here. Excellent, we are now free. Right, so now we have this thing here, so we should be able to have a closer look and see what's happening with it. So let's get the continuity out and just follow these wires. So every time the meter beeps, it means that the wires are in contact with each other. So the black one looks like it's just going round. And uh, is it going to here? No. So the red one goes to... So the red one is like the base of it all. But that's separate, oh no, that's there. So the red one is basically just in contact everywhere. So the black one, I need to look underneath it to see what's happening with this black one, because I really don't understand this. That lifts up there like that to make contact with the red. So you would think that this one here should be the black, but it's not. And saying that, is the red in contact with this here? Yes, it is. And now let's lift it here. But even when I lifted up, the red's in contact with it. So what? What's that? What's that supposed to do? Hmm. Right. Let's. Uh, is there any way I can get underneath this now, or is it glued down? I do need to get underneath it, don't I? Yes, I can. It is glued over here, though. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Right, so this is the original unit here. What this thing is for, I just do not know. Because there is actually brackets on the original unit here to house something like this. Strange. Now, what have they done with this black wire? Oh, the black wire is just in contact with this thing here. Right, so the black wire is in contact with this brass here. Let's see if that's still with the brass screw, which in turn will liven this up here, yeah. Right, so that's the uh, that's the other side of the circuit. So now let's go back to the box here and see exactly what's happening. So when we touch this one here, so when we touch this, it makes the circuit, hold on now. When we touch this, it touches this, which makes the circuit between here and here. So that's just like a switch. So there must have been a separate battery supply somewhere along the line. And then when you press this down, that's how it was making the uh, making the circuit. But where the battery is, I haven't got a clue. Maybe they never got that far. They went through a lot of bother though, didn't they? And also, how was this operated? I wonder originally, would it have been... have a think about this now but saying that look when you lift the lid that's going to work differently isn't it because it's only when you push this down that it's going to work I'm just seeing if the hole here lines up, but it doesn't even line up with this. This is a real confusing one to me. Uh, is that just to let the light out of these two holes? The other thing that's confusing me is why do we need this? Why do we need this to touch there? Because it's already making a contact through here. Is it just because it's going to make a better contact on there rather than relying on the kind of hinge here? All right, so that's it back together there. So now I should have continuity between here and here, which I have. So all I can think is that there must have been another little lead somewhere originally because this isn't going to generate any power to uh, to light up the bulb. 
and also it doesn't work that way anyway because I need to have power go into this thing here I'm just going to put it back in here roughly just to see to make sure I'm not missing something now in fact the whole thing's wrong because look it's all in contact with each other anyway so So look, it doesn't make a blind bit of difference. Yeah, so that isn't a switch. I think I've got to stop wasting my time on this. Obviously, the mechanical thing is designed properly from a factory, but as far as I can see, and I could be wrong, but as far as I can see, this would have never worked anyway, because that is no switch. It's all in contact with each other. So I don't quite know what they were, what they were trying to achieve. You would have to isolate you would have to put some sort of rubber or something underneath these ones here to isolate this from here and then when you press it down I think I've just got it yeah I think I've just got it what it is so look let me zoom in basically when you lift the lid imagine if it was set up differently now when you lift the lid it's gonna go up and can you see now it makes the connection yeah so when you lift the lid it makes the connection here and then it should join the two wires together the problem we've got is that because this is on the base here it's all in contact with each other so what you would have to do because look here the base here is in contact with the pins what you would have to do is undo the two screws here and you would have to put a big piece of rubber underneath and probably put in plastic screws so that then these pins are not in contact with the rest of it and then when you lift this up here it then would have started to work yeah because at the moment everything's just working anyway yeah you can see it's all in contact with each other whether or not uh, whether or not it's up or whether it's down yeah uh, so I think that's what they were trying to do but it's not gonna it's not gonna work also, I don't know why they bothered doing it all over this side. Why don't they just have a, their own little separate circuit? Why did they try to incorporate it into here? That's a really, that's a really odd one. That's a really odd one. If you know the answer to this, uh, l let me know. But as far as I can see, it, it, it was never, ever going to work anyway. It was never going to work. Right, let's get the mechanical thing set up. But what I'm thinking is, let's strip it down and then let's try to oil it up and clean it up and stuff so uh, yeah let's zoom right in right so I'm going to start by just undoing these ones here Just gave a little ping there. Right, let's see now. Is this gonna is the tension out of this? I hope it's out of this. Right, this is bent over here. I wonder is that normal? So this is the main spring here, so I have to be careful here now. This is the main spring. How's this gonna come out? Right, so we've got the big gear at the bottom there. Let's zoom out a little bit, otherwise you're going to miss all the all the interesting bits. Ah, okay. Right, so we've got a brake here. I wonder what that's responsible for. Oh, sorry, no. Do you know what that is? That's just where... That was just wrapped around here and it must have just dropped inside. That was the thing that was wrapped around that, wasn't it? Right, that looks like it's all one piece. Is that going to come out? Not quite sure how that's been held in. Let's undo a little bit more. Let's see if we can get this regulator thing out. It's lovely that it's nicely made, that it can still just come together perfectly. Yeah, 
there we go. Right, so I should be, I mean, that feels, oh, there you go. Look, it's just out of its little home down here. Can you see that worm wheel thing? Is not in its hole at the bottom. <laughs> I think that's the problem. Right, let's put that back in its hole. No, I can't. Oh, and it's out of its hole at the top as well. This has just come out, that's all. Right, let's try to get it back over. Let me take the pressure off the top to try to get the bottom in. There we go. Now, how does that fit up the top here? Does it matter where it goes? Maybe it doesn't need to be in the middle. I'm just going to have a look at my eye loop and see where that fits into the top bit. Yeah, it's in a little hole at the top. There is a tiny, tiny little hole. Let me zoom in for this bit here, because I think this is the problem. Right, there you go. Can you see? Tiny little hole here. Yes, there's hair and stuff wrapped around it, so I'll have to clean that out. But then look, there is a little hole there, even though it's off-centre. And that goes into the hole here. And you can just see, look, there's just, just grime and everything around it. Look at that. Nice. There you go. Look at all that hair. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to IPA it all. Look at those nice gears. Also, it looks like it's had a slight little bit of water damage. So now, when that turns... That should, is that going to turn that? There it is. There, it's turning it. Let's try it the other way. There you go. Yep. Yeah. So now this can't just spin freely anymore. Look, can you see? It can't uh, spin unless uh, uh, there. And that's going to cause wind resistance now. Well, before it was just spinning freely. That's the fault. I'm certain of it. Right, so what I need to do is I need to get rid of all this corrosion here. Let's have a look back on this bit here now. Should I keep all this here? I mean, it looks like there was something there originally. I, look, I don't, that's not doing anything. We know it's not doing anything, but I am going to leave it there because it's, uh, it's part of the history of this. You know, somebody tried to do something here and I'm going to leave it there because I, I personally find that interesting. Right, I am, do I need to take off this bit here? How do I take off this bit here? So that's joined in here, there. How do I get this bit out? Do I have to undo this? It's nicely made, isn't it? And I'm struggling with this bit here and I'm thinking do I actually need do I need to take this apart here because it's just going to be a mainspring which is going to be hard for me to coil up again and then it's going to be connected to this bottom one here so when we're doing the winding up this is uh, we're winding up the mainspring and then it's releasing its energy through this bottom one here so this is turning independently of this one and it's just going to allow it to turn one way not the other way and that is then turning this drum here and the thing that stops it spinning really quickly is this regulator mechanism here so uh, I think we could just get oil in there I don't think I need to take that apart but what I'll do is I'll Part of me is curious. Oh, there you go. I think I have to undo it from here. Do you know what? I'm not going to mess with that spring because if I undo it from here, it's going to be hard for me to do that up again because there's still a lot of tension in there. Look, that has gone round there now, though. Don't want to break these needles. Oh, and that pushes all the way out from there. Oh, should I take it apart more? I suppose I'd be able to clean it better if I could take it apart more. I'm lucky that none of these are broken here. Oh. Oh, what's this about here? Now that's interesting. 
just gonna have a close look under my eye loop on this. Well, I wasn't expecting to see that. I don't know what's going on there, so I'm gonna be very gentle with it, but these are all like little bits of paper, little bits of kind of felt or something. But look, they're not on these ones here, they're only on these ones here with these big lumps of solder. I'm not quite sure why you would want them on the end ones. I understand that, well, it's the longer length that's given the different tones, and maybe they needed more weight on here to give it even, you know, to make it sound more bassy or something like that, you know, a deeper tone. But why have they got these little bits of felt on them? Is it to dampen it as it goes back down again so it doesn't hit against another one? Well, here we go. I have taken it all apart now. Right, so that looks like it's all one unit and that's held in here. So you could unclip that to replace the spring if you wanted to. There you go, you see? So that just winds up there and then uh, it keeps on winding and winding and winding. There's a lot of lot of power in there and then it, uh, it can't unspring all in one go, as I said earlier about the regulator slowing it down. So now we can take that out here. There we go, so we have completely stripped it apart. So let's give it all a good clean because this is there's a lot of dirt and stuff here in here and that would slow it up. So the problem was that this thing was misaligned here. Maybe it had been dropped or something, but the uh, with all this dirt and hair and stuff, it would play slow. So let's give everything a clean. I'm just gonna hoover up this mess here to begin with. This is what I'm gonna use to clean it and then it will all evaporate off and then I have to try and oil the bits that are gonna have friction on them. Now I'm gonna IPA pretty much everything apart from this bit here. I'm worried about these little bits of felt or whatever they are there. So if I put IPA on there, if they're glued on, which they might well be there, then uh, they will just come straight off. So with this one, I think I'm just gonna use like a, a dry brush and just try to clean it from this side here. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just worried about those bits there, but everything else is gonna get a good cleaning. You know what, I forgot all about the little screws, so I might as well clean the screws up as well because they look a little bit corroded. I'd love to know how old this actual music box is because it, it's definitely, it's, the quality is lovely off it, but again, they might not have changed their design in the last hundred years. So, uh, you know, maybe it could be as modern as 30 years old or maybe it could be old as 100 and something. Now I'm going to be using some watch oil and I'm going to be using little oil droppers to drop it in. Now because this is actually quite big compared to a watch, I am actually going to use the biggest oil dropper that I have. So what happens is you just put a dot of oil on that, you just put it in and then when you put it in it kind of uh, gives you a nice controlled amount. So all I'm going to be doing is oiling up every single pivot. So for example where this Let's call it a regulator, goes into the top, I will oil. Where it goes into the bottom, I will oil. Each pivot here, I will oil, I've already cleaned them all out. And uh, where the pivot here goes through the brass bearing at the end there, I will oil there. So every single moving point part I will oil, including the bottom here where this rubs against here. And then hopefully that will make it work quite nicely. Speed to stop it backwinding. Can you see here? 
We've got this plate here, and can you see the like beveled steps that go up? Look, angled steps there, there, and there. So it'll allow it to go this way round, but not back that way. Well, it's time to reassemble it all now. Yeah, there you go. So you can see that gear slots into this bottom gear here, like that. Right, so that looks like it's under tension again. Well, I don't know if that's too tight or not, so I'm just going to put a little wind into the bottom. And see if it uh, if it spins. There we go. Look, it's going. Yeah. Lovely. Nice and quiet as well. Can you see now it's it's releasing its energy slowly? Look at this from before, that was just spinning around really quick, this bottom bit. And that's because of this wind that's being generated here. Isn't it clever? And who can not like that? Look at that. That is just lovely. Quite nice to have a wind up fan, wouldn't it? Wind up a fan and then just let that spin slowly, generate a bit of air. I think I might leave it, I think I might leave it like that. Right, look at this, I'm still working on it, but it's, it's quite uh, fiddly because too far in and it will cause too much friction and stop too far out and it won't make uh, won't make the noise at all and then also you need to make sure it's perfectly like this because you're either going to miss out some of the pins or what will happen is if it's not perfectly in the middle one of these little pins will pick up two of the fingers so you need to make sure that this is all lined up perfectly which is easier said than done anyway I'll keep working on that I will get there success I think so what I did is I loosened this off a little bit because I didn't want too much friction on here. And I think I've got those lined up nicely now. So look at that. It's a shame because it's such a small barrel. When it does that da 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 da, uh, you, you want the next bit to happen, but it doesn't because it runs out. And then it just starts all over again. But look, can you see they're all in the middle now? It looks like the last pin is not being used because I'm definitely on the first pin over here. Do you know what I'm wondering just now? How do I know that this pin's in use and not this one? Maybe this is the one in use and this one shouldn't be in use. So although I've just spent ages doing that, I'm now gonna move all the way along one 
so that this one will actually be the first one in use, just to see if it sounds better or not. The thing is that this last one here does look slightly bent in, so maybe this was the one that was never used. I'll try it anyway. So this is an all moved along one. So now we're incorporating the one here, but not the very first. Thinking by the very point that they put that kind of felt thing on that last one, I am going to do the last one and I'm not going to do this one here. So I'm going to move it all the way along one just like it was before. Right, there we go. I'm happy with that now. What I like is, look, this is spinning so fast it almost looks stationary. How good is that? So what I'm going to do is put this back in the box and I presume that will probably amplify the sound a bit more. So let's get this back together. So many of you would have been shouting this earlier at the screen. Look, that's what this thing's for, because I thought this looked original. It just stops this from spinning, and by stopping that from spinning, it stops the tune. And that spring just springs it back. So the idea is when you open up the box, it starts playing. So look, when you close the lid, boom, and it stops. Open up the lid, and it starts playing. Of course, oh, that's so obvious. Oh, that's lovely isn't it so really the putting the battery in this it's a toughie because to me the battery is the thing that spoils it it's just that it is part of the history of it so look i am going to put the battery not the battery i'm, I'm going to put the bulb thing back in because it adds more interest it certainly added more interest to me even though i can't see how it would have ever worked uh yeah but at least i know how that thing there works now which is uh, i'm really pleased about that isn't it now that's echoing through the box so that's it what a lovely little fix so I think before I put the screw the lid on the top I think I'm gonna just zoom right in to this lovely little mechanism here and that will be the end of the video all right you ready finger off So what a lovely little piece of mechanical engineering. So now that I've seen how nice that bit is there, really the light bulb and stuff takes it away from it completely. Really what would be the best here is to make a little hole in the lid corresponding to this little needly thing which is built into the actual mechanism and then put a little post coming down here, a bit of dowel or something. And then every time you open it, it will go off. And then every time you close it, it will stop. Yeah. But am I gonna do that? No, because I actually quite like the fact that it has been messed around with and it shows the history of the item. Somebody tried to get a light bulb working. I can't see how that would ever work. If you know different, add it down to the comments because as far as I'm concerned, even if you put a battery over here somewhere, all that's gonna happen is, is that uh, it's just gonna be, it's just gonna be on all the time, isn't it? 
unless there was some other switch that you was going to put on the on the thing up here because this is just all one big this is just all one big circuit everything is connected to each other so there's no kind of on and off switch if you do this thing here this is only for the music uh, so I don't really know what the thinking was behind the light bulb but maybe one of you guys might know and you can enlighten the rest of us so that is it for this video what a lovely little box I think ten pounds well spent and a nice little fix as well and now it's nice and clean there's no reason why that won't last for many 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 years to come really happy with that so yeah I'm just gonna screw this back together now and uh, yeah that is it I've got plenty more videos coming up so if you like these trying to fix videos maybe think about subscribing if you have already I thank you so much for your loyal support and uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos take care bye now